All right, hi everyone. Um, so this is um, actually not like a, a learning teaching session. I'm, I'm here to share about something interesting that I, that I built last year. Um, but before I go any further, some uh, basic introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Crystal. I am from AWS. Um, I'm from the professional services team. So if you are not familiar with professional services, we are like the consulting arm of AWS. Uh, some of your companies, you might want something built, you don't have sufficient time, manpower, or, or uh, skills, uh, skill sets in your company, we come in and, and we help to implement. So that's my day job, right? So I'm a data and analytics consultant with ProServe. Uh, I, I do everything related to, to data, but today that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. So uh, storytelling for children with AI technology, like what is that? It sounds so... Uh, lofty and all that. Basically, what happened is that last year, um, I uh, had had an opportunity to build something for reInvent. So, um, and, and this is, is what I presented at the Builders Fair conference. So it's for fun, it's to show you what you can build with uh, AWS services. So let's dive right in. So, are you bad at telling stories to your kids? Um, do they sometimes wish for the other parent instead? because they can make better noises than you. Uh, so, so that's what I was thinking about when, when coming up with the idea. I was talking to some of my colleagues. Um, they work super long hours, and then at night, they still have to go back and read stories to their kids, uh, eight years old, five years old, over and over again. And, and it's always the same stories. You have to make the same noises at every single interval. And that's what they're tired of doing, right? I mean, after a whole day of, 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 of building code, building um, pipelines for your DevOps, you don't want to make the same dog noises again every night. So um, I built this, this uh, application called Immersive Storytelling. So Immersive Storytelling is, is a web app. It accompanies you while you are reading. Um, it, it recognizes what you say, it understands, and then it plays back relevant sound effects in real time. So uh, what it does is it uses a, a uh, different technologies uh, built out of the box, uh, natural language processing technologies, and uh, then also a bunch of serverless technologies just to make sure the whole thing is hosted online and you can use it whenever. So you want something that you don't have to download uh, on your mobile, you don't have to download a whole application, so that's why we build it with uh, vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So uh, it, you just go to the browser, you, you click on it, and, and you start reading, and it just plays sound effects back for you in real time. And uh, if, if you were at reInvent last year, you would have seen me at one of the booths. Uh, this is what I had to present for a few hours uh, on those few days. So maybe it's easier to show you a demo rather than talking about it. So this is the application, very simple. Uh, the kids are supposed to look at you, not the screen. So um, over here, there are just a few different settings that you can choose. Um, because it was up since last year, I'm um, still set to US West, so it might be a little bit slow. There, there's one thing here that you can set, which is max sounds. So this is how many sounds you want to play back at maximum. Uh, oh, let me get a little bit bigger. Maybe a bit too big. Okay. So max sounds. So this tells the application how many sounds you want at maximum from a single sentence. So you, you talk about three different animals, you only play three sounds. You talk about five animals, you play the first three sounds. You don't want to have the sounds keep playing. So you, you, you control it like that. Uh, the plus one is nothing. It's just for me to uh, monitor how many people were at the booth. Okay, so let's start. Hey, oops, let me refresh this. Hey, diddle, diddle, the cat and the fiddle. The cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such fun. And the dish ran away with the spoon. So just the sound of like running. Yeah, so, so that's um, basically that's the entire application. Simple for you to 
uh, for it to accompany you while you read. So it, it just adds a little bit of uh, ambiance to, to, to your reading sessions at night. So some design considerations um, that I was thinking about when I was building this, right? Uh, firstly, it has to be portable, convenient, and it has to be uh, quick to set up. Obviously, this is not my full-time job, so I only had like one hour a week to build this, four weeks maximum. Uh, so I wanted to build it very, very quickly. So what I did was uh, to, to build that web app with that vanilla HTML, CSS. You saw the, the UI, it's not meant to be anything fancy. Uh, it's, meant to be, it's meant to be quick. The next thing is to have very uh, simple, quick hosting and also CI CD setup. So every time I make a change to my code, I can deploy it easily. And, and for that, I use AWS Amplify, right? So it's just a series of tools you can use that, that helps provision your hosting. It sets it up with a static website with uh, CloudFront uh, CDN on top of it. And it also has that uh, CI CD pipeline built in. So the code's hosted on AWS uh, Code Commit. Every time I make, make a change, I push it, I, I see it deployed. Um, on, on, the, on the website already. So it really took away a lot of the undifferentiated heavy lifting for me. The next thing I, I had to consider was that I needed a fast playback of sound. Uh, while you're reading, you don't want to be waiting multiple seconds before the sound comes back. So it has to be as real time as possible. So in order to do that, I had to make um, a few design decisions. The first one is, when you are speaking, uh, first thing is you need that speech to text, and then you need, uh, you need to understand what is being said. So you need to pick out insights. You need to understand the nouns, the verbs that are coming from it. So there are multiple parts to this. Once you get the nouns and the verbs, the sounds that you want to play, you then have to go and pick up the sounds from, from the backend, wherever you're storing it. So all these, um, my yardstick after reading uh, a little bit of research is that it has to be within two seconds or it, it doesn't make sense anymore, right? Uh, people lose interest. So the first part is to use um, transcribe screen, uh, streaming. So AWS transcribe is um, uh, speech to text, right? But normally how it works is, is you have a large batch of files. You create a job, uh, maybe a lot of text files, PDFs, uh, it could be in the, the, the gigabyte kind of range. You create a job and then it, it uh, transcribes everything for you. Um, so instead of doing that, this, this time it needs to be in real time. So I use streaming. So we open up a web socket, you stream uh, whatever you're getting in from the microphone in, and it comes back to you every single time it has an update on what you're trying to say. So uh, this, this shortened that time uh, considerably, right? So the speech to text part was uh, barely any time at all. So now to focus on the other side of things. Um, the, the next one is, is picking up sounds uh, from the back end, right? Uh, when I look at children's storybooks, normally they have a few main characters and these characters keeps on recurring. So one thing that I looked at was caching on the client end. So at uh, the start of the book, you have you introduce a character, a pig, a dog, or whatever. That sound is, is going to be heard very frequently in the rest of the book. So we do some caching on the client end. And the last thing is the storage of the sounds. So the first, uh, the first time I, I thought about it, I, I thought, okay, this problem, maybe I will compress the sounds, right? So store it on S3, retrieve it, and the smaller the size of the MP3 files, the shorter the download. Um, but eventually, that took a lot of time as well, right? The, the download itself and the, the playback and everything, it took more than three to five seconds, depending on the size of the file. Even though these were sound bytes, uh, less than two seconds long. So what I had to do to change that is to actually take the MP3 file uh, encode it in base64 and then store it in the DynamoDB table. So the storing sounds in a table uh, was not the first thing that maybe you think of, but because it's, it's just a binary string, uh, you store it there, it's millisecond, no SQL. All you have to do is, is uh, search for the word and, and you get the sound back. And it's base64 encoded, you just have to uh, feed it into your buffer and it plays out on your speaker directly. There's actually not much processing to be done and that shortened the time from five seconds 
to one point something seconds, and that's what I needed. Uh, I, I did a lot of benchmark testing on how to make it faster, a lot of uh, console.log and timestamps. Uh, and, and what I realized is that the main thing uh, causing the lag from, from the entire application right now is actually waiting for Transcribe to tell me when the speaker has paused in the speech. So actually retrieving the, the sounds, finding out what nouns and what sounds to play, uh, that is taking a much shorter time. Uh, I will dive into that a little bit deeper when we, when we head in, but uh, what I have to understand from this is you don't want to play the sound while you're still talking. Uh, so what happens is you speak in phrases, you speak slowly and you pause. So earlier when I was reading, I was pausing in, in between each line. Uh, transcribe streaming will let me know when the speaker has paused and the sentence is, is full, so it's no longer partial, and then I can start to retrieve the sounds. So it's, you, you don't just read on and the sound just plays while you're reading, so it's a bit distracting. So that part, waiting for uh, that, that pause and transcribe streaming to tell me this is a full uh, phrase, that is the part that takes the longest now. And the last design consideration was the adding of sounds. So um, this means that uh, I can focus first on the uh, main sound package, right? So for children's book, for me, I focus on animal noises, nature sounds, and human noises. So if you, if you do like crying, laughing, I have those noises, but uh, that part is still very much uh, a manual process because you have to find the sounds and you have to load it into the library. So instead of, of, of finding as many sounds as I could, I thought, why not make it modular, right? Uh, this application is for children's books, but I've also heard feedback telling me, oh, this would be amazing for uh, Dungeons and Dragons role-playing games. You say a dragon swoops in and suddenly you hear like a roar of dragon. You, you have fire, you hear the crackling. So you can expand it to, to different target audiences and they can have their own uh, modular sound packs that they uh, install and, and process and add it to the library. So whatever that you need. Uh, somebody also told me that, you know, if I can have this during my business presentations, right? I go to my, my customers and I, and I say the name of, of my company and then immediately the jingle starts playing. So, I mean, you can do that, right? It, it's, it's up to you how you want to do this. So how to make the adding of sounds uh, a bit simpler? So there's a bit of automated uh, process and, and uh, expansion pack uh, logic behind it. So later in the architecture, you'll see you drop the sounds into the S3 bucket, um, a Lambda picks it up, and then it just adds that sound into uh, the DynamoDB for you. So it does all the base 64 encoding, everything, adding it to the correct, uh, adding to the correct word. Yep. And the next one is about synonyms. So I don't want to find... Um, a different sound for jumping, hopping, and uh, leaping, for example. I mean, so sometimes it just sounds the same. Running, walking, quite similar. Heels, walking, you know, it's very similar words, even though one's a verb and one's a noun. So what I did there is to make use of this uh, library called NLTK WordNet. So what it does is it helps to find synonyms for me. Um, I, I put in dog and uh, it comes up with K9. It comes up with uh, puppy, for example. And all those words um, have, are mapped to the same sounds. Because nowadays, com uh, computation is more expensive than the storage. So putting that, that base64 encoded string, it's not much uh, storage in any way. So I find the synonym, and then I, I put the same sound for all those, uh, for all those words. And when I'm using the application, it, it finds the sounds and it plays it back very quickly. Uh, so I can get more hits per sentence. So this is, is the architecture. So uh, very simply, you see Amplify. Uh, that is the, the series of tools to help me with the hosting uh, and, and the CI CD. So you see the blue line over there from uh, Code Commit. So every time the, the maintainer, which is me, I make a change, I, I commit and push, uh, and, and the, the deployments get triggered uh, immediately. And I didn't even have to set up that code commit repo, right? Amplify did it for me. Uh, above that, you see Amazon Cognito. So uh, this is mainly to get uh, temporary credentials. So earlier when I was 
I was uh, doing the demo and you saw that red line, the security credentials have expired. It's because of that. Uh, whenever you, you uh, first go onto the page, it gets temporary uh, access keys and then uh, it, that gives you some permissions to, to uh, use the rest of the application. And then the orange lines at the bottom. So the first thing it does is uh, once you go on the app, you press the start button, you start your WebSocket transcription. It goes to transcribe streaming. So whatever they are saying, you get it back in the form of text. Once you get the text, I send it to Amazon Comprehend. So this is where I am trying to detect the syntax, syntax of the words they are saying. So what I want to find are the nouns and the verbs which usually have the most sounds. So uh, the cat, the dog, the cow, for example, I want to, to pick up those words. Once I get those nouns and verbs, I then hit up my DynamoDB, which is my sound meta store. Basically, I say get item, right? Um, find, find cow and then retrieve the sound bite for cow. Uh, my table is very simple. If you look at it, it only has two columns. So. Once I get it back, I play it back on my web app uh, through the speakers and that's it. That's, that's the entire application. On the right hand side, you see the uh, red lines. That is the pre-processing architecture. So that's how uh, we can add more sounds to the application. You can have your expansion packs. So uh, maintainers, again, you upload the sound byte as MP3 files. You just drop it into your uh, S3 bucket, uh, which is an object store. There is an event notification, right? Every time something gets dropped uh, into the bucket, the event will be triggered and it will send it to a Lambda, which uh, processes the sound for you. So what it does is uh, first it takes that, the MP3 file, it, it gets the base64 encoded uh, string and then uh, it stores that same string for all the different synonyms of the same word. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, if we have some time, let's dig into the code. So again, I am a, a data architect by training. Uh, be kind to the code that you're going to see. So um, this, this first part is about the, the start button, right? You click and... and uh, the most important thing on, on this page is uh, once you click start, it starts streaming whatever uh, you're saying to the WebSocket. So you're yeah, yeah, creating a WebSocket and you're sending uh, all the binary uh, sounds to it. And this is uh, that particular function. So um, it, it creates your pre-signed URL, it takes the uh, the, the credentials that you need and it gives you that temporary um, permissions and uh, every time you are sending the, the audio chunks whenever it retrieves some whenever it, it detects that something is being uh, said it, it sends it to our next function which is the wire socket events function so for this um, we're, we're basically taking uh, we're basically taking whatever that, that's being said and uh, we're handing it to uh, Amazon Transcribe. So on the right hand side, you see uh, you're trying to get whether or not there is a response coming back from, from Amazon Transcribe. So if there is more than, than zero words, then we have to start processing it. The interesting part is uh, the part on the bottom, right? So if they're checking this thing called whether it's partial. So remember, uh, we talked about waiting for the pause uh, before playing the sounds. So when you look at the, what, what the API returns, there's this part, it tells you whether it's a Boolean, right? It tells you whether or not um, the, the phrase is, is partial or not. Because this is a streaming API, the results are coming back uh, all the time. So it, it, gives, it gives you a, a streaming uh, response and I don't want to process every single part of it. I just wait until uh, the boolean turns to, to false, it's no longer partial, it's a full sentence and I start processing what is in that sentence. So this is how it looks like, uh, if you want an idea of, of what transcribed streaming is. Uh, this is me speaking yesterday, I'm speaking to the, the microphone and you can see that um, the words are changing all the time. So it says I'm crystal, nice and T-O-O -O, because at the start, before the phrase was fully uh, completed, 
uh, it thought that word was uh, two, as in uh, T-O-O-2. But when I finished the, the, the sentence, it, it got a more context about the, the rest of the words, and then it corrected it to nice to meet you, as in T-O. So uh, waiting till the whole sentence is full actually gives it more context to give a better and more reliable transcription. So I keep getting all these streams. I check whether or not... Um, so this is how it looks like. So I keep getting all these streams. I check whether or not um, the, the phrases are partial or not. Once it's not partial, I then pass it over to comprehend uh, to pick out the parts of the speech. So the exact API that I'm using here is called detect syntax. So what, what I'm trying to do is to find out uh, is this a noun? Is this a verb? If it is, uh, let's do something with it. And one interesting thing done here is also um, is the, the lemmatizing of the word. So lemmatizing is getting the root words, right? So if you are saying something like um, running, right, the root word is run. If I, if I search running in my sound database, you, you won't come up with a sound. You, uh, you don't want to store the same sound for running, runs, ran, and uh, whatever uh, other form of the word there could be. So you lemmatize the word, you get the root word, and you store it only once. So you first lemmatize it, then you find uh, the part of speech that it is, whether it's a noun, it's a verb, and then uh, there is some logic here to, to limit it only to the maximum number of sounds that we want. So we only want to pay, play three sounds, we don't want to overwhelm uh, the audience, and we get the sound from our database. So here, the first thing that I do when I try to find a sound is I check whether or not it's available in my local storage. So I check my cache. If it is, play it back. If it's not, then I go to my DynamoDB table and get the sound back. So it comes back as a base64. Um, I have to uh, decode it and then push it into the buffer and play it back. And that's it. We're done. So. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's all there is to this, to this application. It's not difficult. I, I built it uh, in a matter of weeks. And uh, I, I, it's still up, so uh, we can probably share the URL. So tonight, if you go home and, and read uh, Hey Diddle Diddle or some, uh, I, I have another story also, The Woman Wanted Noise, I think. So uh, if you want to read those sounds, the sounds are in a database. You can try it out. And uh, that's all for immersive storytelling. Thank you. Any questions from the crowd? I do have a question. Oh. Uh, can you explain again on the when you uh, get the context? Was it the word? Mm. I didn't get that actually very clear uh, as well. Like you explained it, but I didn't get it very clear from my end. Mm, sure. Uh, so you get uh, somebody speaks a sentence, right? Uh, the cow jumped over the moon. Um, I send the entire sentence to comprehend. Comprehend comes back with a JSON. It tells me every single word, what kind of word it is. Um, I can't remember what the is, right? But uh, cow, it will come back with noun. It will give me the part of speech, basically. So cow will come back with noun. Jam will come back with moon. And then I, I pick up only the nouns and the verbs because those make uh, noises. And I lemmatize the word to get the root word. And then afterwards, I, I just uh, try out DynamoDB whether the sound exists or not. So one thing I, I forgot to mention is that it is a lot faster to just uh, get item from DynamoDB rather than check whether it's there and then pull back the item. So if it doesn't come back, uh, I, get, I get an error message and I know the sound isn't there. I store it somewhere else so I know, okay, this sound, uh, a lot of people are requesting for it. I can probably add it in the next time. Um, and if it's there, I just play it back. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Oh. Which message? Ah, oh, so every time I get an error message, I just, uh, there's just one item in my DynamoDB table that just counts how many times. Yeah. Mm. 
Thank you. What is the repercussion of accent on the results of the comprehend and transcribe? That's a that's a very good part. So, uh, it is trained on different accents. Uh, Amazon Transcribe, I think, now supports several different localized accents as well, uh, and and they keep adding it. But it it is it it does play a big factor, right? Uh, when I get some of uh, of my friends to try it uh, with certain different accents, it might not work. Uh, so sometimes it, it just is about choosing uh, which accent, if if it if it does exist, and uh, other times you just have to try to speak in a clearer, enunciated way. Yeah. Like, how do you detect like the end of the speech? Mm. Do you do it on the client side or on the server side? Oh, so transcribe streaming uh, sends all of that information back. So within the, the result of uh, what is being said, so it gives you the, the transcribe text phrase, and then there is just one uh, part of that, that response that tells you whether it's full or whether it, it's partial. So whether it's true or false. Yeah, so that's done on the server side. So it's very, very light on the client. So you can try hard just to ask it allows you to detect the <laughs> Oh! So you don't have to send everything on the server. Oh, that's very cool. I'll try that out. All right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Just one last question. Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So the limit for Dynamo DB is about sixty-four KB. Sixty-four KB per item. Um, my sounds are generally two seconds, sound bytes, right? So even the MP3 file isn't that big. Uh, so when I get the, the, the base64 encoder string, it usually uh, fits in. So it's, it, I'm, it's really because of the use case. If you want to put like very long songs inside, it might not work. Uh, but because this particular case, I just wanted short sound bites. I wanted to get it back very fast. It, it fits. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks so much. All right, thanks for the talk.